Hello and welcome back to the Impact Lounge and the Weekly Impact Review. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Rogue. Hello, Rogue. Hello, Adam. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Very good. Uh, yeah, just finished catching up with this week's Impact. Uh, I've caught up late this week, but yeah, I, I, I know we're going to dive into it in a, in a little while. But yeah, I've really quite enjoyed the show this week. Yeah, I mean, from top to bottom, and I'm interested to see what you thought of the show. I really... I don't think I have any criticism. I liked everything, even the the GWN moment. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get on to criticism. I always you could come up with something, won't I? You know, something very trivial uh, that annoyed me. But yeah, we'll get on to it. But yeah, it was, it was overall, it was a very good show. But before we do that, as always, we usually have a, a couple of uh, shout outs and things. So if it's the first time that you're stopping by the channel, please do hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, whatever it is you want to do, leave us a comment. We don't mind. All interaction is good. We got quite a lot of likes last week. I think it was one of our record weeks for likes. So that's a positive thing. Uh, and we got a load of comments as well thanks for answering the trivia questions and for leaving us questions which we're going to dive into before the impact review um yeah so uh, let's go to the trivia question first of all before we, we do kick off uh what was remind us of the clues last week and the answer row yes uh for last week's trivia it was name that wrestler once again and the three clues were he was part of lax and a former tag and exhibition champion he was in Two former companies. One, he was the inaugural champion, and the other, he won the contest. And I think that was it. Am I missing? I'm missing the last clue. But anyways, the point is the answer was low key, which a lot of you got right. Um, I think what gave it away when I said he used to be a part of LAX, so you know that being past tense. And then you know he's a former X Division champion. He a former tag team champion if for those of you who don't remember with triple x and then finally he was the inaugural ring of honor champion and then he won nxt back when it was a contest under the name caval so congratulations to all you guys who got it right absolutely well done and the first person was willow rush uh who we're going to have a question from him anyway that he he posted on the channel on the youtube channel so we'll, we'll be asking one of his questions in a minute but well done willow although there was quite a lot of uh winners there so uh yeah i've, I've got the the dubious honor of the trivia question this week and it's a double barreled answer that i want uh so it's not only one trivia it's it's a two-part of this one so i want to who am i and what was the name of my tag team that i was in is uh what we're looking for in the answers so um i was like rose question last week i was a ring of honor world champion a former one uh i hail from the united kingdom uh i never won any title in tna as it was back then although i do have the honor of being a former tna explosion commissioner uh and i was in a short-lived tag team which is very fondly remembered by anyone who I ever ask about it when i've asked the two members of it when i've interviewed them in the past it, they always say that they're always asked about it even though they're already together for about a month or two so there you go that's that's the the trivia question this week i'm british i was a ring of honor world champion i was a the commissioner of explosion i didn't even know they had a commissioner of explosion but i found out that it is and uh, i was in a tag team with a former world champion who's been on our screens this year believe it or not and is a current world champion in another company so there you go uh what's my name and what was the name of my tag team with uh, the former world champion so there you go do you know it ro so I'm, I'm run this past you <laughs> i have an idea we'll we'll speak about it offline i think i got a good idea though Right. OK. So, yeah, that's this week's trivia question. And as always, just leave us a comment below, whether it's answering that question or just uh, something that you want us to cover on next week's show. And uh, as I said, we have got several questions. We had, we had a load of questions this week and there's obviously been quite a lot of news with the Slammiversary press conference, those kind of things. And uh, yeah, so we've had lots of questions and we've picked out two. So, Ro, do you, do you want to uh, go ahead with your pick for the question this week? Certainly. And just to make sure I'm pronouncing this guy's name right, is from Richard Cartilage. That's two syllables, I believe. Okay. No, that's, you've just said three again. It's Cartilage. <laughs> uh, my apologies. Cart it's Richard Cartilage. Richard, 
Don't get offended. <laughs> keep, t- keep messaging us. All right. Anyways, his uh, question was, <laughs> do you think impact small roster helps the company or hurts and why? I don't think it hurts. I think what they're doing is in, in, and, and I want you to, to tell me what you think too, Adam. I, I kind of feel with Don's vision, he's kind of use, uh, using impact. Not, I don't want to say using, but the way that they're doing impact is kind of like how ECW was where, you know, it's a small roster and, you know, there's interchangeable parts. And I, I don't think it hurts the company. I mean, I, I think it helps. But then if I want to say the only thing where it hurts is... They're, they're able to get guys or and gals who are under the radar that, you know, nobody knows and they're able to build them up and they're able to build their resume under the impact umbrella. If I had to say the one thing what might hurt is they become bigger, bigger than the company itself. And then they end up getting poached away from, you know, WWE. Well, yeah, pretty much WWE. So I don't know if that answers your question much. I don't think it hurts. I just think what it hurts that that much i just think what happens is it's easier to build your name since it's a smaller roster you don't have too many people that are really accomplished where they're hogging the main event scene there is opportunities to break through but once you become bigger than the brand then there's the possibility of them being poached away for bigger money contracts from wwe or company not mentioned yeah I think you're right about the poaching and obviously the big one on everyone's lips at the moment is possibly Eli Drake. I I think the WWE are really helping impact with this, by the way, by the fact that they are poaching the the talent and they're doing nothing with them. (laughs) You know, so I think that long term this will this will come back and people will be saying, do you know what? I don't want to go to WWE. Look, the money's good. But, you know, creatively, uh, is Bobby Roode happy at the moment? Well, I can't talk for him. Maybe he's happy driving around a gold Bentley. I don't know. But the point being is I can't imagine he's enjoying his position on the card with such a bland character. You know, is I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Is Eric Young happy? Is James Storm happy? You know, all these guys, you know, was it really worth selling his soul to uh, Vincent Kennedy McMahon just uh, for, you know, a little bit more money and, and creatively being stifled? So, I think there is a problem with that. With regards to the roster, I think that that the reason why they're doing it is purely down to finance, you know, and this is the hand that they've been dealt and they're doing their best to to keep the guys that are important to them and, um, as you say, bolster the, the, the troops with um, anyone who's available on the indie scene or with other promotions. And, and I actually quite like it because it means that you do get a bit of a revolving door, but at the same time, you know, you, you see fresh matchups much more quickly. Whereas you wouldn't do that if you had a large roster. If I had the choice, of course, I think uh, I think even Don would want a large roster that you could play with. But um, you know, it's just a, a sign of the times, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah and I, so. I, let me add one more comment with that. And I think too, what we have to factor in is with them only having one show, and kind of similar to when ECW only had one show. You know, you have a large roster. We already see as it is. Some people we're not we don't see for weeks. So I think if you had an additional show. And I know with Explosion, that's kind of like a de facto second show, even though it's a one match show, then you can use a large, larger roster. But I mean, it I, I don't have too much of a problem with it. But I think, too, it, the one big thing and I, like I said, I don't think it's so much a hurt, but what just kind of stinks is it's hard to really fully invest in some of these people that they bring on board, because when somebody comes in and. You know, they don't really have much fanfare and then they're able to build their name up underneath the impact umbrella. Then it's kind of like we have a two to three year time span with the time frame with them. And then they're going to end up going on like it'd be nice to get somebody that has a long tenure in impact. But with that said, too, I will say for the most part, it looks like we're getting some of these wrestlers that are coming on board. We're getting the prime years of their career. So we're getting the best of the best. So then once they leave on, like even when I, uh, the times I would see AJ over in WWE and AJ's phenomenal, but obviously, you know, it's apples to oranges comparing his work there versus his stuff in TNA. And obviously that has to do with age and attrition too. But I guess the main point, what I'm saying is impacts able to get these people in the prime or about to enter the prime of their careers and then you know they put their years in impact and then they're able to go on and it's like impacts getting their best years so i guess that's a positive 
I, I think if you've got a wrestler on your uh, roster for, for two, three years, then I, I think that's pretty much the lifespan of a wrestler these days. Yeah, don't get me wrong. You know, you got the Undertaker who's going over twenty five plus years. You know, same with Hogan and Ric Flair. They'd always probably still be in the ring if they could. But you know, when you look at someone like EC three, was it a loss? To, to impact losing him this year? I don't think it was. You know, what else has he got that he could have done in impact? Bobby Lashley, you know, once again, another one who maybe could have done a bit more. But, you know, after two, three years, they, they pretty much faced everyone they can. And, and it, there's very little that's fresh out there. So I, I don't have a problem, you know, because these guys will come back to impact at some point. Maybe not Lashley. But I, I'm pretty certain that at some point, uh, impact will either have EC3, James Storm, Eric Young, or Bobby Roode, or one of those, come back at some point uh, when their time with WWE finishes. So, yeah, there's my bold prediction. Let us know who you think will be the first one back through the door. There you go. There's a question for our fans. Right. Okay. Uh, thanks for that, Richard Cartledge. See, uh, that's that's why Adam is greater than Roe uh, because I can I can I can read. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go to Willow's question now. Willow Rush. Uh, who asked, what are the chances of Impact having a partnership once again with uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honor? So I did actually ask this of Josh Matthews on the, on the teleconference this week, and, and he didn't really answer it, uh, to be fair. But uh, from my viewpoint on it, I think that there's more likelihood of having one with New Japan than there is Ring of Honor, is my personal opinion on this. The reason being is that Ring of Honor is a direct competitor, you know, because they are United States promotion. You know, they've got their own TV show, all these kind of things. So um, I, I think you're more likely to see some tight with New Japan, especially as Don Callis, I think, was over there, wasn't he, with uh, on their commentary team? I don't know if he still does that, actually. I'm not sure. Um, so I, I think you're more likely to get the, the New Japan link up. And the fact that Ishimori is back for, for Slammiversary, amazing news. Well, we've talked about it lots of times, haven't we, saying that he's so slick in the ring and, you know, everything looks really, like it hurts, you know. And that's what you want. You want to be able to suspend that disbelief. And with him, you can, because he looks like an actual fighter. So, yeah, I I'm really pumped that they're doing something in New Japan. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see some more talent. The problem is, obviously, there's a language barrier uh, with the talent from New Japan. But that doesn't mean that, you know, can you imagine how good it would be to have... As an example, um, if there was a grand championship, which was the other question we're going to talk about, uh, if that was still around as a belt, having that defended at, at the Tokyo Dome on a new Japan card against someone, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Um, but let me ask, they still have the partnership with Noah, don't they? Yeah, I believe so. Um, I, I think the only one that they have they don't tend to show anymore is the Crash promotion and and um triple a I, I don't know if they ever had a, a tri well yeah triple a so i i know that they're all tied in with lucha triple a's as well and the talent to share and they but they, they don't seem to promote anything for mexico anymore have you noticed that i mean yeah outside of it seems the only person who gets you know some type of uh promotion is uh phantasma and i think that's one thing we've seen from the partnership is you know there's really one two guys with phantasma and ishimori who really you could say our impact guys um i have no problem with them partnering with new japan my thing is is just this you have to be careful with some of these partnerships because you know like i i've always said i'm all about you know building within the impact roster and i understand you know it's not really there's not a whole bunch of stars i i get that but you really don't want to put your roster at the expense of these partnerships so as long as it's beneficial for both new japan and impact i'm all on board maybe you could do something where you know if there's somebody that not really getting enough tv time in impact or somebody that you know they really need to get kind of um some matches underneath their belt you know, they're not really TV ready. You can send them over there for a little bit and then in return, kind of like a talent exchange. Send some, some people from New Japan over here, maybe to aid in the X Division tag, whatever. But that that's what just would be my only thing. I agree. And, and one thing that is quite exciting is, uh, what, uh, you know, some of the other news that came up this week uh, is about the Jericho Cruise. And I can't remember if it was you asked me, Ro, last week, uh, but I did uh, appear on someone else's podcast last week uh, for doing an impact segment. And um, it was either yourself or, or the other guy who asked me about whether we're ever going to see Jericho in impact. And, and I said, no chance, never going to happen. You know, put my reputation on it. 
I actually think it might happen now. <laughs> and uh, especially after this last week, you know, obviously they're going on the the Jericho cruise, but he's now got a belt. I think it is in New Japan, isn't it? Is that the one? Um, I think it is New Japan he's in, isn't it? So he, he won the belt uh, last week. And I never thought that Jericho would do anything other than the odd appearance outside of WWE. But it does seem like he he's going on a Brian Cage world tour. So I, it's getting closer. I, I, I think that, I'm stepping back from that brink of it. It'll never happen to. It might just happen, especially with his friendship with uh, Don Callis. And see, Jericho's a prime example. You know, we were just talking recently about guys having a two to three year window. I think Jericho and even Eli to some extent, too. I think these are guys that are able to work up and down the card where if they're not in the title picture, you know, it's not, you know, they just mail it in. And that was the problem I had with EC3. Jericho's really been a jack of all trades. I mean, he started up in the cruiserweight division, then mid card. I mean, he was stuck in the mid card forever. Finally got a couple opportunities in the world title picture capturing the world championship and then you know he's had side feuds so he's one of the wrestlers and that's why he would be one if he does decide to come only good can come from it you know he's not you know he i don't think his ego is that big where he doesn't mind putting over the next big star in impact mm. and that's what we kind of need more of like with guys who come over in impact once you've achieved a level of success be able to give back you know if they if they take you out of the main event seed because they want to build someone else and they want you to work with them be able to do that and i think in the past years that's something we haven't seen if they're not in the title picture you know they just mail it in and then when they leave they badmouth the company Absolutely. It, it, it just goes to show that belts don't mean anything. It's the guy carrying the belt that makes the belt, you know, and Jericho is a perfect example of that, that you don't have to be in the world title scene or as long as you, yeah, Eddie Edwards is another one with Sammy Callahan at the moment. You know, they're the hottest thing on TV and there's no belt involved. You know, so yeah, there you go. Anyway, thanks for your questions. Keep leaving them for us and, you know, we'll do our best to answer uh, the most interesting ones each week. And, and, and if we don't answer them, don't get disheartened, discouraged, whatever you want to say. Uh, we'll just try and obviously uh, get one on next week for you guys. So uh, let's get on to impact then. Let's, uh, what time is flying away. So we both already said that we quite liked it. Was there anything in particular that you wanted to talk about before we dive into the segments? Nah, let's get in, man. Let's get in. Right. OK, so, um, yeah, we started off with a recap of last week's show, looking at Su Young or Sinaries, all these kind of things. Once again, a great little video package. Now, one of the things that, that BQ often talks about is the graphics that they use. And there was something on this week's show that did bother me was I don't like the graphics of Slammiversary. They've got like a, a strange... It's almost like, you know, uh, Thanos clicking his fingers, you know, people evaporating away feel to them, they're pixelated. And it, and it, it almost looks like flies, uh, you know, circling around them like they stink, you know, like uh, P P pig pen in the old uh, Charlie Brown cartoons. Uh, most of you'd be thinking, what the hell's he on about here, Charlie Brown? Um, yeah, so I don't know if you noticed it this week, the, the graphics, are, the, I, I don't like what they're doing with it, but there you go. Uh, the, the video packages are still awesome. So um, opening match. Z and E versus Drago and Aerostar. Now, I have absolutely no problem with the people in this match, but it does seem strange that Aerostar and uh, Drago are getting a, t a title shot when I don't think they've won a match, have they? Yeah, I think they've won one before, uh, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I've learned to kind of just do away with this, at least an impact as far as number one contendership and random title matches, it, it's going to happen. And I know it's funny because later on, you know, we get a match advertised for number one contendership. But I just thought this was amazing from top to bottom. They were able to kill two birds with one stone because they gave us a tag match, but an X Division style tag match. And the length of the match, I really thought that that's what kind of blew, blew me away because normally these type of matches are quick, you know, uh, fast paced sprints. But they both, you know, all the participants, man, and, at, you know, for the makeshift tag team of Z and E, the chemistry that they have already, at least an impact, because I know they tagged on in the indies. It's incredible stuff. And this was a good showing for Drago and Aerostar. Um, not that I want to say I'm, you know, big on like, oh, well, you didn't botch, but they were clean. This is the cleanest I've seen them work in impact. I know accidents happen, but sometimes too many of the botches, it can take me away from take me out of the match a little bit but just from top to bottom this match obviously my favorite by far 
match of the yeah, night. Yeah, uh, you know, as, as I said before, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, of the tag champs, but this was good. And do, do you know what also made this? Uh, and it reminded me very much of of uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan type commentary, or you know, but Don Callis was fantastic on commentary. He, he, the bit where he was talking about he would electrocute Aerostar by throwing water at his mask, I thought was, I, I was genuinely laughing at that. And uh, I just thought it was a great piece of heel. Well, he's not really a heel commentator, but in, in that moment, he was very, very funny and, and very good. I don't know if you caught that at all. Yeah, he, you know what, he's been taking little jabs. Like, I think the one that really stuck out to me, I want to say he was an impact or two ago where he started criticizing the Orlando fans. You know, and I know nowadays with Hill and Faces as a whole, it seems like wrestling is trying to do away with it. But you miss that art. And I think Don is kind of bringing that back because I think he has an old school mind. So, you know, it's him saying things like that, it's funny. <laughs> it was just brilliant. Uh, he was like saying, yeah, it's not in the, the rule book that you get disqualified for that. Yeah, just thought it was very good. But you're quite right. It's good that they're slowly, you know, I've talked about this loads of times that wrestling shouldn't be hard to book. It should be good guys and bad guys, uh, and they fight each other for something. And it should be the same with the commentary. It's simple. You have a heel commentator, you have a face commentator. The face commentator is usually the play by play guy, and the color commentator is the, is the one who's the heel. And Although we haven't had that, it does look like they are moving towards that. And, and you know, I think Callis, Callis and Damore, honestly, they, they deserve knighters, even though neither of them are British, um, for, for, for what they've done for Impact. Honestly, this time last year compared to now, it's, it's just amazing. Honestly, it's the first time in a long time that I actually feel positive about Impact is going to stick around. Because every year, you know, you always hear the rumours, oh, it's financially on his knees, you know, Billy Corgan's then the money, whatever it may be. But now it does really feel like they're on the right path and they're a safe pair of hands. And I know we've had loads of false dawns over the years, but this this feels different. Yeah, I agree. If I had to say, and I had tweeted about this, you know, we're at the halfway mark of the year in 2018 overall i i think and you let me know what you think it's been excellent for impact i feel like we've had some stability there's not that false sense of hope because like you just mentioned you know a lot of times we hit these points where okay well things are going to pick up and everything's going to be good and then something hits at least it seems like a lot of that stuff and and i hate to jinx it but a lot of that backstage you know late payments or somebody unhappy and even when people are asking for the release they've been able to handle it where it's not being leaked before the next set of tapings and i mean with spoilers there ain't nothing you can do about do about that that's always going to be there and that's overall with any wrestling promotion but i just think this regime really has got it and has uh sold fans that hey they're here they're for real See, and just picking up on some of the things you said there about releases, you know, this year has been no different to previous years where they've had people leave them at Shit Creek, basically, you know, like uh, Laurel Van Ness leaving when they put the title on it, things like that. But it doesn't feel like it's been a major panic. You know, Alberto doing what he did, they've just got on with it and it hasn't affected the product. And that's uh, that's, you know, to me, that's everything. Anyway, um, great match to start off with. Zinni retain. And yeah, then we, what do we have next? We went back to the studio with Callas and Matthews looking at uh, Sue Young's championship win, looking at uh, LAX with King later on tonight and Brian Cage on an action. So they basically ran down the show. Um, they also obviously really plugging the Callahan Edwards match later on that night, saying that, that the management want nothing to do with it. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so we had recaps of that as well of of the Sammy Callahan uh, Eddie feud is there has there been a better feud in wrestling this year do you think yeah by far and it's just it's funny cuz they really fell into this uh, it seems like impact's best feuds are the ones that you know something goes wrong you know not that they something that they in, intended and uh they find magic the one thing too uh I don't know if you're about to mention but they also had a uh, Sanjay and Petey the Sanjay and Petey segment yeah so where he sends him home to, to just building up the, uh, you know, it's it's P.T. Williams again. Now, do you know what? You know, I, I laughed and joked about it and some people will have seen spoilers of who it is. But um, do you think he's involved? I think so. But after seeing this, I think what's going to end up happening is he's going to get attacked eventually. So then that's going to 
probably save him from being being uh you know the suspicion that they might have that he's a part of it yeah so um after that we had the gwn flashback of the week with tommy dreamer versus rvd now you said you like this match yes and you know the one thing i didn't even notice if you notice in this match and credit to dreamer his uh in his wrist like the bone had popped out when he was going for a splash but I, I just thought, you know, for a lot of these GWN moments, and a lot of times I'm just like, eh, you know, because I'm just like some of some of the listeners and some of the fans. If I want to see the match in its entirety, I can just watch it on the app. But I really liked this. I felt like it kind of fit. And maybe it had much more to do with the fact that, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of matches on this episode of Impact. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed this. And it's crazy to think that, you know, when you look at the crowd and the roster during this time, you know, I, I kind of forget RVD was a part of the company. So, you know, this is a company that had RVD, Sting, all these guys. So it, it was it was a nice uh, re- um, a reminder. I'm just going to come back to RVD in a second, but you mentioned the app as well. Um, I quite often, you know, watch Impact on, on the app. Uh, and this week, my, my DVR missed the last few moments of uh, of the show. So I didn't actually see. So I went on the app. To, to just to see you know see what how, how the show ended and for some reason you couldn't watch impact on the app in the uk this week uh usually it's free but it said you had to be a paying subscriber so i don't know if that's something that's changed or not but uh uh let us know if if our listeners are right there and um you've got you know anything about this if you had problems with it just let us know eventually saw it on youtube by the way but rvd what's he up to these days is he a free agent is he in a wrestling promotion has he given up would you like to see him back um i don't know i just know he got a hot girlfriend <laughs> i don't i know that's not saying much but i'm sure he probably does some uh one one-off appearances you know at indie shows probably has some matches here or there but i i don't know man i i really think you know seeing him in ecw seeing him in wwe and then seeing him in tna i feel like i've seen the best that rvd has to offer so i'm not really excited i wouldn't be too much too excited to see him back especially in a wrestling role i mean if he was managing or something of that magnitude then fine but not to be prominently featured yeah i'm just uh very quickly having a look now to see if i can see anything about it uh so uh yeah um you can fill it fill in time if you like rope <laughs> i'll come back to that uh where's it oh, he did, god he did a lot in his life i tell you um pers- yeah, five-star wrestling. There you go. Van Damme was scheduled to compete in a 128-man tournament by five-star wrestling. Yeah, 128. Um, and he's on July 30th, Van Damme was announced to compete at Insane Championship Wrestling. Fear and Loathing X. That's the Glasgow one. That's the one down the road. There you go. I should have known that Rob Van Damme is in my neck of the woods, and I didn't. Anyway, yeah, back to the show. So uh, after we had the GWN flashback, we went to the LAX Lair, where uh, obviously we had Eddie and Diamante returning. I like Diamante. She's nice. You know, I I have forgot about her, and I know she had been on the shelf, but, you know, we've been talking about the knockouts division. Boom, her coming back. This will really be an opportunity for her to kind of uh, gain some momentum. So, you know, once we get the the upper echelon knockouts coming back, then we'll really have a strong knockouts division. But with this segment, man, and this is what I what I thought originally when King had uh, debuted back with well with LAX, I should say, it seems something isn't right. You know, they've mentioned with Conan being jumped, and Diamante kind of thinks so, the same lines of what I'm thinking. Like, you know, something seems real suspicious about it. So I'm interested to see what happens next. I think they, they did, you know, they did a good job of this. You know, they're sowing that seed and putting that idea in your mind. So, yeah, I, I think that they've advanced the storyline really well. And there was also a nice bit of continuity. What they were wearing was the same as what they wore out to the ring uh, for the match, which, I, once again, I thought was excellent. You know, I really enjoyed the LAX versus Cult of Lee. One thing that did bother me slightly was that they're kind of hinting that Caleb and Cult, the Cult of Lee, you know, maybe 
going their own way. They're trying to, you know, maybe make Caleb into a singles wrestler by what they were saying on commentary. I, I, hopefully I, I misread that, but uh, I thought it was an excellent match and uh, it was good to see that uh, LAX got the win. They needed to get back, you know, into the winning ways. It's just a shame. I don't know where it leaves Cult of Lead, to be honest, but there you go. I, You know, I didn't catch that on commentary. Um, this match, it, it was designed to get LAX a win, get you know, to get back on the winning side of things. I don't think it hurts Cult to Lead too much. I really think after all of this, because one would assume that LAX is going to eventually get back in the title picture, this feud, more is going to happen between these two teams, I think. I think we're going to get some long, drawn-out feud because it looks like, you think about a few months ago, they were feuding for a tad bit. Uh, Colt Lee gets the number one contendership. They lose their title match, and then Colt Lee beats him again, and then they beat Colt Lee this time. I think after LAX gets back, on their winning ways and gets back to tag team championships, they're going to revisit this feud. And I think we're going to get a long drawn out feud because there's something there, something between these two groups. I don't think it's necessarily a breakup of Colt Lee, but I just think in, I guess that's the one thing that sucks is this match is really just designed to get LAX back in the win column at the expense of Colt Lee. But I do think this is something they're going to revisit down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I hope Cult Lee do stick around because I do like them. Uh, I wish they had a bit more uh, backstage stuff this week. But anyway, um, Facts of Life was next. Eli Drake uh, coming out for the Facts of Life segment. Uh, what can you say about this? He, he's just a, a master crowd manipulator, isn't he? I mean, he and once again, commentary did a really good job of, uh, you know, helping sell the segment as well. Yeah, I, I liked it, but it had me, and I read some comments earlier in the week where Don, he was, you know, speaking about the top names that he's seen as an impact, and on one article he had mentioned Eli, and because I'm, I'm really kind of, I don't want to say monitoring the situation, but because it can either go in two ways. The last thing I read was they were still in negotiations, and uh, he was just talking about with Eli, Eli's so good that you know, the stuff he says, you know, him being a heel, he, he entertains at such a level where it's hard to go against the guy. So I thought that was cool to kind of get that praise. You know, with Eli, once again, like I mentioned with Jericho, he's shown that he's able to work top to bottom. But I feel like what management has done in the past is they've, you know, once they take him out of the title picture, they just, you know, they don't have anything for him. And, you know, taking this segment away that he used to have, I think this is wonderful for him right now. And I like that he called out uh, named Austin Aries. So it kind of lets you know, I don't know if that was just a one off or maybe they have something down the road because we mentioned this. There's something there. I don't know why they can't do a hill versus hill. I mean, obviously, I think in that match, Eli would probably be the de facto face. But I like that he mentioned that, and he mentioned impact management. So we don't we don't know, if, you know, maybe he was just mentioning that, or maybe he was shooting. And then I like that he mentioned Moose because it le leads to the encounter with Moose. And what's the, what are we getting next week? Yeah. Well, the, the the thing that I liked when he mentioned the management uh, was Don Kaz just going, "Well, that's a little stiff, Josh." <laughs> you know, as I said, yeah, it's just masterful by um, by Don Callis again. But yeah. Um, what was very, very apparent, and we've talked about this before, about, you know, you, you think Moose is a future world champion, and I'm sure he will be. But when he came out, he he just, he's like a charisma vacuum to me. You know, compared to Eli Drake, you put the two guys on the mic, and, and Moose, you know, within 30 seconds, you're like, oh, God, I, I really don't like this guy. I'm supposed to be cheering him. You know, he's so boring compared to Eli Drake, who, as he says, I don't need gold because I am gold. Uh, and he really is gold, isn't he? Yes. And then you saw what I, I had left you hanging, but you saw now we're getting a number one contendership match next week with the winner facing mm -hmm. Austin Aries at Slammiversary. Seems like my prediction might come into fruition. Just saying. Yeah, I, I think you're right, but... Hopefully he won't win it. <laughs> there you go. I don't mind him being in the title because it's, it's a new matchup and it and it gives Austin Aries, you know, a, a credible challenger. But I, I kind of hope Austin Aries manages to. Well, we're assuming that Moose is going to win. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, we have got that next week, and I just wanted to mention the the segment with Moose as well. Although it's later in the show, we might as well cover it here as we're talking about him. But I even didn't enjoy his angry segment backstage where he was pacing up and down. Even I thought that was rubbish. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I'm so down on Moose. I just don't like him. 
you, do you think though maybe it's because i'm just asking you do you feel like his stuff he was kind of forcing the main event by default versus actually building up towards it because we seen with and although i know his feud with lashley had already culminated but he he it just seemed like after that they didn't really have much to do with him like even with the congo kong bit you know that that it kind of ended before it really started yeah, I, I, I don't think it's anything to do with him going into the main event because, let's face it, you know, he's bid his time. You know, he, he had a, the Grand Championship for a long time. He had a feud with Lashley. He had, as you say, Congo Kong. He had America's top team. Um, so, no, I, I think that he has gone about things and he's deserving of his place. I just don't find him very interesting and very likable. Uh, that's all. That's the only reason I don't like him. I think he would most... I, I know we always say there's too many heels, but... I think he would be a more interesting heel than face character. But there you go. Uh, what can you do? So, yeah, so next week, there's that, that match. Right, up next, we had uh, a, let's face it, it was a squash match, wasn't it? Rohit Raju versus Brian Cage. And, yes, <laughs> once again, the commentary did a good job here of just saying, uh, effectively, yeah, he usually likes to uh, challenge himself, but he didn't do it this week. So Mr. Explosion uh, really did eat uh, Brian Cage uh, very very quickly he lost the match but this was really just setting up the Matt Seidel bit wasn't it yeah it's just it's funny before we get into the Matt Seidel bit because if you you know I watch Explosion every week and Rohit Raju's a mainstay and the character that he has on there is in what we see in Impact I feel like Impact would be better served leaving them on Explosion till they're ready to debut the Desi Hit Squad. Because I feel like this does him a disservice. He's, you know, trying to hone his craft in Explosion where, you know, his matches, he's been improving a little bit. And then only to come to, you know, be on Impact and just get destroyed. They, they could have given him a bit more offense, couldn't they? But, you know, there you go. It is what it is. And as I said, it was all about the post-match much Seidel bit, wasn't it? So I really like Seidel's music, by the way. I think it's great. I, most interesting Seidel's been ever in his career, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, yeah, um, came out, started prodding Brian Cage. Uh, interesting that they called it the F5 when he, when he hit that move, because I, I would have thought that would have been copyrighted to Brock Lesnar, but because I'm sure when Brock Lesnar left WWE to go to, was it New Japan? He went somewhere uh, over in Japan. He had to call it... I think it was the verdict or something like that. He, he certainly had to change the name of the move. So uh, I always thought it was a, a copyrighted WWE thing, but they did call it the F5. And yeah, I, I just don't, you know, he's going to have to lose next week, surely, because you don't beat up the champ that, you know, and, and get one over on him and then go on next week and win the match. Usually the person going into, into the fight, you know, who's, you know, left on the on the floor, staying at the lights the week before is the one who wins it. So, yeah, it's, it's I, I really don't know. Is Matt Seidel going to beat him clean or is there going to be some shenanigans? It's going to be interesting to see because even if you had Seidel winning via shenanigans, like I would think, because they don't want, I'm sure they don't want Brian Cage to to lose you know his first match on impact if they when he eats his first loss i think it's going to be either at a special you know those pay-per-view like events that impact produces or at on pay-per-view my guess would be matt Seidel wins some t sort of count out or disqualification or no contest but then my question is will this feud continue or is this going to be a one-off because and that's what's going to be interesting because if it's going to continue then it looks like they'll be running with brian cage in the x division but if it's a one-off then it shows that this was just kind of like to give him something to do and they really didn't have any major plans on keeping brian cage in the x division yeah but uh yeah it'll be interesting and, and as i said I, I i i've got an argument for both of them really you know i'd be quite happy either of them to have the belt and the reason why I'd like Matt Seidel is because he's interesting with the belt and I don't see where he goes if he loses it. You know, he's just going to fall into the mid card. Can't really see him doing it, you know, getting into an interesting feud. So I'd like to see him keep it for that reason. But at the same time, I think Brian Cage as X-Division champion traveling all over the world would be another interesting option. And, and funnily enough, you know, it's one of the questions we got this week as well about, you know, the mid card belt now that the, the Grand Championship's been retired this is the perfect example of that you need a mid-card belt of some sort, you know, for someone like Brian Cage, you might not have that personality, but he can go and defend it around other promotions and things. So um, when is the match? Is it next week? 
Yes, and to elaborate on that that question that we got, uh, apologies for not remembering who had answered it. And I know BQ had tweeted out he thought that maybe with the X Division they're going to expand it kind of like what they did in past years. I think we're at the point with the X Division, it really is what it is. As much as they try to pride it as being no limits, we see the caliber of wrestlers in the division. And one thing that impact, and I'm not saying this current regime, but in the in you know the past couple of years where they've done a poor job is really diversifying the division because most of the guys are all essentially the same small stature, high flyers. I mean, you got some guys, I guess even you would say like a Rohit Raju where he's more of a striker type, but he's a smaller guy. So when you try to expand the division, there's only really a handful of people who can work that style. I mean, I know Brian Cage is capable of doing some high flying maneuvers, but you think about a guy like a KM or even if you're talking about about with the partnerships traveling all around the world um yeah i'm sure you know some promotions have some people who can work that style but i would imagine having brian cage if he were to win the championship the x division championship he might main event one of these shows and he's going against one of these their main event stars what if they can't work that x division style and it just mm-hmm. it becomes a standard one-on-one match so yeah i i hate to see that the grand championship you know, they decided to merge it. I mean, I understand, you know, since that was a Corrigan idea and we all know when a new regime comes in, just like with any employer, they're going to make changes in anything that was kind of carried on. If it's not something they're fully behind, they'll do away with it. But I hope, you know, somewhere down the road, they decide to you know, bring back the TV championship because I think at this point with the roster, they need some type of mid-card belt or you're going to have guys just... You know, essentially just having matches, you know, just to have matches, not really competing t- towards anything. Yeah, it was uh, Lee Putlon uh, who asked the question. So thank you for that, Lee. Um, I-, I think if they bring back a belt, I reckon it might be something like the old TV title that they bring back or something like that. Um, so I- I'd imagine that would be it could, they could even bring something like the hardcore title back, you know, because then that fits in with like Sammy Callahan uh, and those kind of people. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Right. Um yeah, so moving on, we then had this Skype interview with Austin Aries. Now, this was just strange. I, I, obviously, they've got a promotion with Skype, uh, some advertising of some sort, uh, because they did, you know, feature the logo and things like that. Usually, it's just, oh, you know, we, we've go to so-and-so at a secret location, but it seems like they were promoting Skype for some reason on this one. He was obviously in the parking lot out back, by the way, not in uh, anywhere else in the world. So what, what did you think about this? I loved it. I mean, we're seeing an Austin Aries now full heel. He's committed to the full heel character, and I think this best fits him. I think he probably, when he came back, that's probably something that he wanted to do, but during the time, it was heel heavy, and I mean, it still is heel heavy, but hey, that's here nor there. I like the fact that he brought up facing Drake, Eli Drake because Eli, he's 0 and, uh, Eli Drake is 0-2 against him, so obviously that would be a favorable matchup. And then calling Moose mediocre. I love this because he he had a neutral stance. You know, because in, in he, he did give Eli his credit, like Hills, you know, I guess Hills have to stick together. But <laughs> I, I had the only thing, and I'm not even saying it was a criticism, and I don't know if it was the connection itself, but it seemed a little bit laggy. And like I said, maybe that might have been on my end. I'm not sure but no no it was it was laggy it's the same on mine as well not a good advert for skype (laughs) (laughs) so yeah it was it was laggy absolutely uh i noticed that as well but no i thought it was it was an excellent segment and as he said he's he's gone full-blown heel so uh that's you know what not what we've been crying out for but it's good that his character is now defined isn't it so yeah so good stuff uh after this we then got uh another segment um, which was this time Madison Rain, uh, a vignette of that, which I don't know. I, I don't like Madison being back because they're making her out to be a huge star. And I've never thought of her. When I think of the knockout division and the champions and the talent that they've had, I never think of Madison Rain up there in the top 10. I, I, I'm sorry, I just don't. So they're making a big deal about it, like she's got some major star power. And I don't think she has. And, and I think they, they're doing a bit of a miscue here. And it's obviously Josh is pushing for it, I would imagine. But do you get this? I mean, do you like Madison Ray? I have no problem with her. I think she's accomplished. You know, she accomplished a lot in former TNA. I just, the only problem I have, and even when I was, you know, talking about her being Tessa, if this is just designed to give Sue Young her first major feud, 
they could have went a whole different route because she Madison Rain has the name where they didn't have to go this route. But the way they're they're pushing pushing Madison Rain, you'd like to believe this is kind of like her redemption tour. You know, she's been through a lot. You know, now being a mother, now you know one thing that's eluded her is having that six sixth knockouts championship reign and the way they've been building her up it's going to go two ways when she eventually faces Sue Young you're either going to have Sue Young run through her and then this whole all this is going to seem like a waste or you're going to have Madison Rain triumph and be you know capture that sixth knockout championship reign and at Sue Young's expense and I and like I said and I know I keep repeating myself and I apologize I think right now the state of the knockouts division with so many names on the shelf Sienna Rosemary and I know Taya I think Taya should be coming back I think for Tessa Sue Young Kiera and now with Diamante coming back they need to utilize this time to build them up so when we get the ones that I just mentioned to come back will have a strong knockouts division. Madison Rain's a good hand. I understand you have to kind of make her strong. That way beating her seems like um, accomplishment, but it just seems like they're doing so much to push her as like this underdog, you know, who's been through so much and really is just trying to come back and get that, that uh, six knockout championship reign. And I just think it'd be the wrong move to do it at the expense of Sue Young because Sue Young's character is really going into a whole nother level right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can't, can't disagree with anything that you said there. Um, after the, the, the Madison bit, we obviously then went into the backstage segment with Mackenzie talking to Tessa. I quite like this. And although I'm, I'm not sold on, on Kiera, uh, I thought, that it was, you know, showed a bit of character about her, you know, and she came back into it, and, and it was a good segment. And Tessa looks legit like a badass. I like, I, I think Tessa's brilliant. Yeah, this gave her opportunity to get her kind of edge back. You know, she dismissed the matchup with Madison Rain, talking about it, you know, being a fluke, and I think that was good. It was needed. I didn't mind the interaction with Kiera. Like I said, I hope down the road once Tessa. You know becomes champion and is really the top of the knockouts division they're able to revisit this because i think they can bring up this part where Kiera, you know she's really been displayed as the upstart you know with some promise and they're able to revisit this and have you know a long drawn out feud so i, I had no problem with this because tessa's really been getting the one up on kiera mm -hmm. uh, once again we, we jump to another backstage segment this time well, we've already talked about it but moose but one thing i noticed about this segment more than anything and it then obviously featured in the, the final segment as well with sammy and eddie is that there was a lot of swearing on this show which i don't have a problem with but uh you know they, they're really trying to go a bit edgier aren't they I, I don't know if it was bleeped out on the american one but it was certainly bleeped out on the on the british version yes that's why i think they're really going um kind of the ecw route because ecw kind of had that edginess and we had we even seen it earlier in a segment where um, Eddie Edwards, I'm sorry, he was mentioning how he was going to bleep up Sammy Callahan or bleep and murder him. And I think it, it kind of gives that realistic factor because when you're talking about a blood feud and you really want to take someone out, you're not talking in the lines of like, man, I'm going to mess you up and, you know, that's it. You're going to, you know, I'm going to waste you or you know, whatever, you know, some kind of corny, corniness. And I know a lot of times that's just to cater to the younger audience. But Impact, I, I want to, I, I think the demographic, although they have some children who watch, is really kind of that 18 to 36 uh, demographic. Mm -hmm. So you can get away with it. It's just like how ECW was. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I noticed that, too, and, and I, I think that's cool. It makes it more real life. Yeah. So uh, we then went main event time. Uh, I know we've flown through the show today, but that's because um, there wasn't that much wrestling on there <laughs> this week. But, um, I, yeah, be, before I get your take on it, uh, I thought this segment was completely different to other things that we've seen on the show before. And I'm referring to, you know, the final deletion and... Uh, I can't remember what they're all called, you know, but the Broken Universe stuff. And this is more real, hardcore, gritty. Um, and I know on the teleconference call that, that Josh kind of likened it to that Broken Universe style. I, I, I like the, the movie trope, you know, the, the, the kind of movie vibe about it. But I, I've said it before. I don't like the way that these things are edited. 
and it takes me out of the moment and it's like a, a really poor production and, and i think they could have done so much better and they do so well on the recaps and you know the pack the video packages but whatever they're doing anything with either uh ali or rosemary or you know the, the kind of this fake horror storyline editing it's just I, I don't know i just don't like the editing you know everything else is good the music the actual what they were trying to achieve with this uh but i don't know the editing it seems very you know like it, it's someone's high school project you know the, the cutaways you know the close-up of you know of a car door opening you know those kind of things keys in the hand it, it just it takes me out of it and it's a shame because this could have been fantastic it was very good but it could have been fantastic what, what were your takes on it i had no problem with it you know, it looks like they're just trying to find different ways to keep the feud, you know, still fresh. I mean, ultimately, what they're going to have to do, obviously, and I, I, I'm i fully expecting at Slammiversary, we get the blow off to this. But really, I really think the biggest takeaway from all this, and even with all, all the fighting in the woods and having OVE, uh, you know, it was funny with uh, Jake, he's in the, in the uh, tree everything and i i just was like it's only a matter of time of like man eddie's gonna go run right through him it seems i don't think they're turning eddie full hill but it looks like he's becoming unhinged or he's snapped and i think that helps for his character because before he came across more as a happy go lucky guy and i think it's gonna help him moving forward where he kind of has that edge i think one and i'm just reaching you know probably fantasy booking how crazy would it be after this all culminates? He snaps and joins OVE. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I think Sammy would have to leave, but I don't know. Well, well, yeah, no, actually, do you know what? I can't see that. <laughs> I take it back. Uh, I don't think that will happen. Could it? Could it happen? No, maybe not. Maybe I not. Mean, you know, but, just, 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 hmm. I, I just, I just finish this. I mean, just for just a short, just a short period. I'm just saying, just to throw kind of a monkey wrench, and you know, it could be used as a tool just to kind of get at Sammy. But I'm just saying to see Eddie snap like this. You know, once this feud eventually ends, you kind of wonder where will they go from there. If they're gonna go the crazy Eddie route, you know, where 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 can you go with that? Do you know what I I would like to see, and the blow up to the feud I think would be that if if it's Tommy Dreamer or if it's Sammy Callahan and he's about to take him out and Davey Richards comes back, um, that that would be a good way to bring it back to to bring him back his wolf character back out. I think that could be a potential way of of, of kind of bringing him back from the brink, you know, because obviously I don't know where Tommy Dreamer came from in this. I don't know why he's been involved. But anyway, um, so it's been interesting. It was good to see Lucha Underground T-shirt on there as well. And Tommy, I don't know if you noticed that. He was wearing a Lucha Underground T-shirt. Um, but no, I, I thought the segment was very good. It prolonged the feud. Uh, some, you know, some stupid things, you know, like uh, Dave Chris hiding in a boot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it just silly things like that sometimes bother me but overall i thought it was excellent and and once again the you know the language uh where sammy can callahan you know, screamed out let's do this money funster uh excellent you know it feels like a real you know the fact that they've got swearing in it even though it's bleeped out it makes it feel real doesn't it as opposed to a scripted tv show yes the 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 spike through the head or whatever it was he was pushing into callahan's head was was completely ott you know and once again the editing didn't help with this in that you could see you know it was a, a take with makeup later on you know um but yeah I, I, overall I, I really like this and as i said i had to jump onto a youtube to see the ending of the match of, of the match you know where he took tommy dreamer out and and carry on looking for sammy so yeah i, I don't know where we go with this now to do we just assume that he stood out in the woods looking for Sammy? You know, well, you know, and it seems too what they're gonna what they're gonna do too. And this is where, and that's to say, they keep giving us. It's like uh, I want to compare it to like those choose your own adventures where this option and that option. Because we've seen him attack Tommy Dreamer this time, and although it was just a a low blow, but now one would assume that after he's done with sammy maybe he feuds with dreamer so that's why there, there's so many different layers to all this what, what makes it great but i really think at the pay-per-view we're going to get the big blow off and i'd imagine sammy's going to get the upper hand because it seems like as of late eddie has really been owning sammy so to speak 
Mm. Yeah, I, it it could very well be. Um, could, could he do a face Sammy Callahan? I don't know. Could you know, as in turn Eddie full heel and turn Sammy face? I don't know. Is that possible? Has he got the kind of character that can do that? I don't think he has. So, yeah, I, I think Sammy will win the feud. Absolutely, I think he will win the feud. And to be honest, he most probably deserves to win the feud because he's managed to get interesting character out of Eddie Edwards. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that in, we talked about the roster at the beginning of the show. Impact has had some fantastic in-ring talent, but they've never been able to develop characters that that well. You know, look at AJ as a perfect example. You know, he's seen as Mr. TNA, but was he ever that interesting? Most probably not. And what they're doing now is they're taking people who are not very interesting, Matt Seidel, Eddie Edwards, these kind of guys, and they're turning him into something which is, you know, pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And and that's why, you know, I'm, you know, when we talk about from time to time, and I know some of the listeners mention, oh, who would you like to see next? I really think with this, because it's all on creative too. And I think the one thing with that doomed AJ was with so many changes, the, I think Jarrett was the, the biggest one behind AJ. So then, you know, other people weren't so, I don't think a lot of the other people who were behind the scenes weren't as high on him. But with this regime that we have now, you know, they're taking some of these people, you know, and really giving them stuff to work with, giving them a chance to shine. That's why I think there's not really a reliance like there has been in the past to grab the biggest, you know, free agents. You know, you can grab some guys that maybe, you know, under the radar and other promotions and bring them on board and make them your homegrown stars underneath Impact Umbrella. But I think with this creative team, they're able to find something and unlock something with a lot of these people on the roster. Yep. Well, that runs, uh, that's the rundown of the show finished. Uh, I know uh, you're going to give us maybe a quick highlight of what's happening next week. Uh, but before we go into that, just remember that if this is your first time stopping by the channel, hit the subscribe button, check us out on Facebook as well. Uh, the impact lounge on there. And yeah, we, we, our show gets better each week with the comments that you give us and that we can feed off and talk about. So please do make sure that you're letting those down there uh, in the comments section below and uh, you give us a like or a dislike. We want to, to get over 60 next week. That's the target folks. We want 60 likes and dislikes combined. So uh, make sure you do that. So what's on next week's show? Yes, we're going to get Tessa Blanchard versus Kiera Hogan. We get our, X Division title match with Matt Seidel defending the X Division championship against Brian Cage. And then I'm assuming our main event is a number one contendership match for a shot at the Impact World Championship at Slammiversary with Moose versus Eli Drake. Yeah. So that's next week's show. Just before we sign off for the day, don't forget to answer our trivia question. And just a reminder of the clues this week, uh, I want the name of the wrestler and also the tag team that he was briefly in towards the end of his uh, Impact career or TNA career. So he was the commissioner of Explosion. He was in a tag team with another world champion. He hails from the UK and he's a former Ring of Honor champion. I think they were the clues that I gave. If there was another one, uh, you have to go back and listen to the beginning of the show. So let's see if anyone can beat Willow this week and get the answer correct first time. So we want the name of the wrestler and also the tag team that you're in. Right, but that's it for now. Unless there's anything else, Ro? Nope. We got everything covered. Excellent. Well, have a good week, folks, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>